Ten years ago, in 2011, Dr. Beng Chun Ho and colleagues, including Nancy Andreasen, a distinguished schizophrenia researcher, published a study of 211 first-episode psychosis patients whom they'd followed for an average of seven years, some up to 14 years. During that follow-up, these patients had at least two MRI scans, some as many as five, and their widely published finding was more antipsychotic treatment was associated with smaller gray matter volumes. Was this because patients with more severe illness received more antipsychotics? Were the brain volume reductions due to the illness or the treatment? Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. That was 2011. Do we have more insight now, 10 years later? Here's a review article on that subject from Chengmin Yang and colleagues. They gathered 36 studies with data on brain volumes and antipsychotic doses, and the net result is not clear. <laughs> Overall, the data go in different directions depending on which region of the brain is examined, which antipsychotic was used, and the duration of psychosis before treatment. A few regions even appeared to increase in volume in association with antipsychotic use. Among the most recent studies, some used functional MRI to look at brain networks and fractional anisotropy to look at white matter volumes, but the outcomes were no clearer there either. One finding that emerges from Yang and colleagues' review, if antipsychotics do indeed cause brain volume losses, the effect is dose-related. So, use the lowest effective dose. Well, that doesn't get you anywhere, does it? Of course you are already trying to find that lowest dose, if only to minimize side effects and tardive dyskinesia risk. Maybe these brain data provide one more reason to do so. What's not so clear is how aggressively one should attempt to taper antipsychotics after first episode psychosis. If the illness is severe enough to warrant antipsychotic treatment in the first place, then too early a discontinuation carries its own risks, including everything that can be lost through recurrence of severe psychosis, relationships, jobs, education, financial security. But given that there are multiple reasons to try to taper an antipsychotic, including the possibility that it can cause brain volume losses, when should that begin and how fast should it go? Well, patients take this decision into their own hands all the time, right? Yet, some data would help in trying to forecast for them the risks of stopping on their own. Enter Hamlet. No, not Shakespeare's Hamlet, the Netherlands Hamlet. This is an acronym for a study called Handling Antipsychotic Medication Long-Term Evaluation of Targeted Treatment. A single-blind study now underway led by a whole slew of mostly Dutch investigators comparing antipsychotic continuation versus tapering and discontinuation. The article in which they describe the trial's protocol is entitled, To Continue or Not to Continue. Get it? Hamlet, to be or not to be, right? That study is slated to be completed in 2026. They started recruiting their intended initial 200 patients in 2017. Perhaps we'll see some interim data, but otherwise we've got a while to wait. Before concluding here, one more statement of the relatively obvious. It's ironic that studies we conduct to look for potential harm from our treatments, like antipsychotics and possible effects on brain volume, can be used to lambast us. At the same time, though, we really need to listen to our critics and continue to search for data that support their concerns, not just data supporting our longstanding practices. Clearly, any results must be handled carefully to avoid causing undue fear for patients and families regarding treatments that might, at a particular moment, be far better than no treatment for avoiding disastrous consequences. Balancing risk and benefit is clearly complex here in this realm. No one should oversimplify it. In summary, this new review of studies with long-term brain imaging and antipsychotic exposure doesn't really move the needle regarding risks and benefits of these medications. It does illustrate how hard it is to determine the potential risks of long-term antipsychotic use. There were reasons to minimize antipsychotics even without brain imaging, but how fast to proceed and whether to continue or not to continue, that is the question. For more on this, you might try a responsible description of the Critical Psychiatry Network's perspective on psychosis by two of its proponents, Drs. Moncrief and Middleton. Full text is linked in the references.